Regan, widely known as Patty Cuts, is a renowned figure in the world of barbering, celebrated for his exceptional skills, creativity, and the influential contributions to the industry. Pat has earned a stellar reputation for his mastery of the craft, specializing in the art of precision fades. With an extensive career, Pat has also cultivated a diverse clientele, including celebrities, athletes, and influencers who seek his expertise for their signature looks. His innovative approach to barbering goes beyond traditional techniques, incorporating modern trends and cutting edge styles that have set him apart in a competitive field. Pat is not just a skilled barber, but also an educator working with brands like Babilis Pro and Old Spice to share his knowledge and techniques. All right. So today on the podcast, we have a very special guest who we are calling Patty. We can also... We can also refer to you as Pat, we hear, um, but we're super excited to have you on the podcast today. Welcome welcome to Volume Up by the Tees. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate coming on. It's going to be fun. Um, is this your first podcast or are you, are you a podcast pro? Yeah, I've done a few before. Yeah, Just I've casual. done a few, a few hair things. Some of my friends like that are in different industries, like one guy has a movie, um, he like, rate, like, you know, does movie reviews. Okay. He'll have me on sometimes. That's fun. Um, I've been on a few sports ones. So yeah, just kind of, obviously I've been on a few hair ones. So yeah, I've, I've done a few. Here we are. And we want to start with your background. So you've had quite a journey um, to where you are today, and we're going to get into all of that too. But take us back to kind of where you started. Um, we know that barbering was both a hobby and a hustle, and you turned that hustle into a full-time career. Tell me about those basement blowouts, because if I did my research right, I think that's where you started. Yep. Down in my, <laughs> down in my parents' basement, we have like a cellar. It wasn't even like a finished basement. It was just a, like a <laughs> a seller. And I was about started cutting hair. I started cutting my own hair when I was about 12 years old. Wow. Um, I just had like a passion for just the process of doing it, you know, and um, let that led to me cutting a lot of people from the neighborhood. And by 16, I was cutting up people from different neighborhoods and different high schools. It, it, it all happened pretty quick. Um, I just had such a passion for it. So uh, yeah, by that, by like 18, I was making some good, you know, good money from it, you know, even though they were still five, $10, you know, um, I had a lot of clients and I just never thought it could be an actual career though. You know, I thought yeah. I had to go to school, like go to college, I mean, and, and do something like that. Um, and that was always, this was always just like a hobby to me, you know, when I was younger. Yeah. So I just never thought it could be a, um, a full-time career, you know, and, um, you know, you probably see my story, which I don't mind talking about it now. When I was in college, my, my dad committed suicide and that's when I dropped out of college. Okay. Um, cause I took it really hard. And yeah. so I dropped out of college. Um, didn't know what I was going to do. I got caught up in the drugs and alcohol. Um, didn't know where I was going to go with my life. I ended up having to go down to Florida for, um, for a rehab rehabilitation center, yeah. you know, to get my life back in order. And I ended up staying in Florida. Um, when I got out of that rehab, I still didn't, it still didn't click to me that this industry could be, you know, a full time, you, you can like live a life off of it. You know, it was always just a hobby and a passion of mine. And um, I remember I, I had a few jobs down here in Florida. This was about 10 years ago and I was just miserable and finally, one day I was I was delivering pizzas and I remember like st stopping on the side of the road. I think like I think like buffalo wings spilled over in my car and they, <laughs> they, they got everywhere. And I just turned over to the side of the road. And I was I remember someone told me I can go to barber school and I can start like the next day. Wow. And I just made the decision right there. I was like, I'm going to go to barber school and I'm going to try and do this as a career, you know, and ever since then, I've just been um, you know, motivated to, to make it a career. Yeah. And quite a career that you've made certainly. Um, so then, you know, you went into Florida Barber Academy, right. And then I would talk to us a little bit about kind of shooting your shot on that Instagram DM, that first sort of, um, you know, client that you had and sort of reached out. Like, and you mean like a celebrity client? Yeah, I have from an yeah. article. Was it Darrell Revis? Revis? Yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. Uh, he just got <laughs> in, inducted into the Hall of Fame, which is pretty cool. Um, That's awesome. But he's my he was my first, you know, big time client, and I was yeah. I remember, 
I was just like, this is about like six years ago, seven years ago. I just remember like I was, I was like, how I want to cut these, these players that I've looked up. To. I'm a huge sports fan. So okay. I was like, I want to cut these guys that like I've looked up to my whole life. And by this time I had a really, you know, I worked on my Instagram, yeah. you know, I got way into photography, which I'm very passionate about as well. So I had my Instagram set up where if these guys actually just got to my Instagram, I know they would like the work, you okay. know? Yeah. So that's when I just started messaging um, all these different players. And I was like, I would just be like, Hey, I'm the best barber in Miami. Yes. Cause you have to, re you, you have to make sure they see the first line because obviously they, they won't be following you. So when you go to that second, you know, request page, yep. you only see the first line that someone True. writes. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, I, I would try and catch their attention in that first line, like best barber in Miami, barber poles, stuff like that. <laughs> and I talked to some guys afterwards and they were like, Hey, that actually worked. Like I actually saw that. And I was like, let me see, let me actually see if this dude's the best in Miami, you know, that's awesome. Not that I think I am, but it's just a way to catch their, you know, attention. Yeah, um, for sure. It, and it totally worked. Were you nervous for that first cut that you're like, Whoa, somebody picked up on this and here I go, I'm making a house call. Yeah, I was actually really <laughs> nervous. Um, he he answered me on a Monday. I remember it was a Monday and he's like, yeah, for sure. And I remember I was so excited. <laughs> and then I didn't hear from him for like three days. I'm like, ah, he, uh, he ain't going to. And then I remember I was I went to my one of my friends and I was like, damn, it was too good to be true. And no lie, like a half hour later, he messaged uh. me back and, uh, and he's like, hey, can you come by today? And I'm Ever since then, like even the next day after that, I had um, people that he trained with okay. wanting haircuts from me. And one of one of the guys is one of my really good friends today. His name's Mark Ingram. Yeah. Um, and he came to me the next day and it was which is crazy. You know, it's just all you need is one person. Yeah. And it just kind of, you know, it's just it's just wild how that works. Yeah. And so great that you had the confidence to be like, OK, I'm doing it right. I'm going to make this happen for myself. So yeah. Fast forward to today, you now travel around the country giving cuts to, I'm sure, many players, whether it's NFL, UFC, stars, standouts. Um, how did that sort of start to be a thing? You know, you've got the first couple. How did it parlay into something more? Uh, well, they kind of just, so the one guy I was cutting, his name's Michael Thomas, plays for the Saints. I don't cut him anymore, but... Um, he was the first guy that started bringing me out every week and he just came wow. to me he's like, Hey, can, can you come here every, every Friday before the game and give me a haircut? And I'm like, I was like, yeah, I was gassed. I was like, I, even though I had to change my whole, basically had to change my whole life for, to do this because Fridays right. are the busiest days in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. So my whole life changed drastically because I can't work Friday and I pretty much can't work Saturday. Mm -hmm. So, um, one, I had to make sure it was worth it for me to do it. Um, and two, it's just, yeah, it's, it's definitely changing. And like, it's, I have to, you know, my clients that I cut every Friday and Saturday, I have a, I used to have a lot of people that came every week, you know? Yep. So it was a, it was a difficult, even though it sounds so cool, it was actually a difficult decision to make because yeah. I had to change so much, but, um, I'm very glad I did. You know, I, my clients that, you know, I still cut a lot of them today. They were, they were so cool about it and, and, you know, supportive and understanding. So, um, yeah, they just came to me and Michael Thomas was the first one. He's like, can you come out, you know, every week and, um, cut my hair. And I was like, yeah. And then I would, I would cut a bunch <laughs> of the saints players. So okay. I'll go to his house first. He would have a bunch of people come over and I would just, cut up like a lot of the team I would go to some other people's houses in um in New Orleans so it, it was pretty cool and then that summer um obviously I'm Travis's barber Travis messaged me on Instagram that next summer so that was oh, about wow. six years ago and he just messaged me and it's like hey I'm training down here in in uh Boca Raton Florida can you come and uh give me a haircut uh at 6 a.m. <laughs> He's like, can you cut my hair at 6 a.m. every week, um, you know, every Wednesday or whatever? I forget what day it was. And that was like four hours before the shop even opened, you know, and I was like, I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, he wasn't even like massive. He wasn't like yeah. he is now at the time, but he was really big. And um, I was like, absolutely. And then once that summer ended, he went back to KC's. He was like, hey, what do I have to do to uh, to get you out here every week? 
and and I was like, let's make it happen. And we we made it happen too. So luckily it kind of worked out perfectly. Um I was able to handle both guys at the same time for a little bit. I, I ended up just <laughs> cutting Travis full time. So now I, you know, I go to KC every Friday. Wow. I think this is six years of it now. Holy six, smokes. Have you six, missed a Friday? <laughs> not many, not many. Wow. Try, yeah. Sometimes I'll have different, you know, if I have a baby list, you know, something for baby mm-hmm. list or something, but I haven't missed many in six years, which is pretty cool. Oh, okay. So Philly fans are famously intense football fans. Did you feel yeah. like you were cheating on the birds when this all went down? No, <laughs> um, not because, well, one, I mean, uh, Travis's brother, Jason's, he's one of the uh, Philly legends. So Travis, okay. you know, he loves it. He, I, I actually have the Eagles tattoo right here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. You're a super fan. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Eagles fan. Um, but, um, the only time I was, I had a very tough time with it was last year's Super Bowl when, you <laughs> right. know, the chiefs played the Eagles and mm-hmm. I was like, what am I going to do? Travis is one of my great friends at this point. So it's like, <laughs> What do I do? I got the Eagles tattooed on me and Travis is one of my good friends. What do yeah. I, but Split I just went and middle. watched the game. It was a win-win <laughs> situation, you know, um, went out with the chiefs afterwards, you know, so but that you know, was the only time it was a little tricky. That's a pretty unique problem to have, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always wondered that too. Like when you asked me that, like when I first started, I always thought like, what if one of my guys plays the Eagles in the Super Bowl and it finally ended up happening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what are the actual odds of that happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. I mean, if you would have said to yourself, you know, when you first moved to Florida, this is where you would be and that was the dilemma you were going to have, you probably wouldn't have believed it, right? No, it's it's really it's crazy to believe to be honest cuz I used to have these guys like I used to when I was a kid I used to like cut out pictures of, you know, Sports Illustrated magazines yeah. and hang them up on my wall and now I'm like friends with these guys so it's kind of it's kind of um you know it's crazy to think you know what a career what a career you've made so as as a 2024 celebrity barber it seems like the art of photography which you mentioned has really become important to your craft talk to us about how you express your art through different mediums how photography remains sort of integral in your career that's i mean that that probably is what got me to where i'm at today yeah. i'm a firm believer of that because if i didn't get my instagram to how you right. know professional it looked I don't think I would have all these, you know, celebrity clients. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe, but I don't know. Um, so I'm a firm believer. Like I have my camera sitting right here. Um, I have a few it different is. ones. So yeah. I, I'm i just like, a, um, I'm just a firm believer in photography. And I took it very seriously. Um, obviously, Instagram's changed. But like a few years back, probably like, I started taking it really seriously, like right after barber school. So like eight or nine, like eight years back, I really like just went on YouTube every night and every day I would practice what I learned the night before on YouTube. And I just tried to learn everything I possibly could. And, um, and I started getting really good. I started understanding lighting and Mm -hmm. what the lenses mean and different settings, um, different like how to shoot people like what heights to shoot at what angles just stuff like that and I think I'm a firm believer that that's what took my career to the next level so if um you know obviously it's changed today it's more video um you know oriented with Instagram Mm -hmm. and all that um but I still love photography I I like it more than doing videos um I like the whole process of just setting up and making just a really nice picture. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that that photography is what took my career to the next level. Right. Because if the best barber in Miami wouldn't have had a great Instagram feed, yes. what, where, where are you? That would have been yeah. one click off. Do yeah. you teach anyone else photography or is it something that you just kind of hold close to yourself? Um, it's something that I just kind of picked up and I just, I just, it's like, it's like, it's like what it was for like starting out with hair. Like it was just like a hobby for me. I just enjoy it, you know? So I just like, like one thing about me is I like learning new things and then I just like to just go and do it, you know, like 
like with cutting hair, or like with photography, I, I got real into golf for a little bit. I still am, okay. but like, you know, I get like really like one track minded yep. and I try and learn everything about what, you know, what it is and try and do the best at it that I could possibly do. Yeah. A true um, creative, right. You're immersing yourself in, in the, the hands-on craft. Yeah. So, okay. So you mentioned your Instagram. And for us, you know, it represents everything that we want pros to do, right? A digital visual portfolio of your work for everybody to see. We obviously know that it paid off for you. Um, Also on your Instagram, it represents a handful of recognizable profiles um, from different industries. And the, perhaps one of the most recognizable recently was you at the Super Bowl with America's royalty. Talk to me a little bit about that and kind of that moment. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, <laughs> this whole year has been, are you mean, mean uh, Taylor Swift? Yeah. So this whole year has been completely, I mean, I've been cutting Travis for six years and we've been doing the same thing every year, same haircut. <laughs> he plays the same, you know, it, it's just like every year is the same. And, um, and now Taylor's here, everything's changed because she's such like an icon, you know, yeah. so everything is drastically like bigger you know it's like even travis had to move his house like right after they started dating he had to get a new house um so now that's further everything has changed this year that's yeah. like it like now i have to drive further in the in the uber <laughs> um just stuff like that like security's tighter when we go to I'm games sure. like yep. um there's we can't go different places anymore like we used to just go and get din like dinner at, at places in kansas city um, so a lot of things have changed this year, but it's really cool to see like, um, like the changes for the good, you know, it's really right. cool to see like how much of the personality that everyone's getting to see Travis. Cause I know his personality and he's mm -hmm. one of the best guys in the world. Um, but now the world is getting to see that, you know, so it's, it's really cool. Taylor's like a super sweet person, um, She's from the Philly area too. So we connected okay. real well. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> we had a lot to talk about, but um, she just seems like a person that I went to high school, like a girl I went to high school with, you know, it's, she's a really just nice person, always interested in what you're saying. Um, so it's just, um, it's been a really cool year for sure. Yeah. You've been on a, a roller coaster of year for sure. Um, you know that, you, you know, you talked a little bit about Travis, but he was recently in the news, not for just his incredible career, um, but for saying that he coined the fade. We know that this isn't true, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. But you give a great fade. Um, we want to talk about that hype and kind of what that was like, knowing that it was a different year for you. And now the microscope is on your fade. <laughs> yeah, that whole situation was just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, like the New York Times made that up, you know, and obviously- I mean we know the fade was, you know, we know we didn't make the fade popular. The fade was popular for years and years and yeah. they happened to do it on February 1st, black history month when, you know, the black community made the fade popular, you know, so which was, I don't think that was right to, to bring that out right. there and say that, you know, Travis made the fade popular because we've been doing the same exact haircut for six years and not one word was said about it for the past right. five years. So it's kind of crazy that like this year now they're now like, He's been having the same haircut for five years and now they're <laughs> now they're talking about it. But um it's cool to see my work actually recognized. You know, I've yeah. I've got a lot of compliments on the, you know, the fade itself, um, which is pretty cool. You know, I've gained a lot of followers, which is pretty I'm cool. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but I actually had a few bad headlines in that. Like people made stuff up, which was not a good thing yeah. um with that whole thing. Um, like some people made up some fake stuff, but it came a lot of good came out of it, you know, so it was uh, it was a crazy situation. For yeah, sure. for sure. I mean, even to think about it, did it ever cross your mind that his haircut would then be in the news? I mean, he's such a a colorful character from his fashion to his podcast, all of the different things. And they honed in on the fade. It was kind of interesting. It, it is. It, I never did. I think that because it's such a <laughs> barbers do that haircut literally yeah. all day, every day for the past hundred years in barbershops. So it's such a, it's like a, such a simple haircut that I never thought it would be like, you know, Odell Beckham, he has hair that you're like, Oh, that's, yeah. that's different. Pat Mahomes, 
stuff like that. Never did I think, you know, a three on top with a, a mid, you know, ball of fade would <laughs> be coined a, a haircut, you know, so... <laughs> But it, yeah, it was cool to see. I just wished the head, um, I just wished like the, you know, the news reporting did it a little different, you know, because right. they could have gave credit to the right people, you know, because yeah. we definitely didn't make the fate popular. <laughs> yeah. That's been popular for forever. So for sure. Um, okay, so we know we were making it clear you did not create coin the fade, but thinking about if you could coin a style, what would it be and what would you name it? Talk about putting so you on the spot, I did right? This, um, <laughs> the funny thing is we did this, there was like this competition I got in. This is actually what got me a lot of followers a lot okay. of years ago. And it was like, make up, make up a design, a hair design. And, you know, if you win, you win a few cans of like hair gel. And I was all, I was like, oh, I want that, <laughs> you know, didn't have any money at the time. I was like, oh, I want to win that so bad. And I actually came up with this little hair design. It was called the x-ray part. And okay. And Basically, instead of shaving, you know, shaving lines in, yep. you you leave hair around the sides. So it's almost oh. like a negative. Yep. So instead of like, you kind of like leave hair there and that's the design. Um, and I called it the x-ray part. And that's then great. I actually won that competition. It was on a um, page called Barbershop Connect, which is yeah. Barbershop Connect's the biggest barber page, you know, there is. Um, so that got me so many followers, you know, um, Lee, the guy who he owns Barbershop Connect, mm -hmm. you know, he sent me the care package. I remember it was called Lay Right <laughs> and I was so gassed, oh, I but I was Lay just, right. I was just more happy to win, you know, just to win for my, you know, for my dignity. You know, I'm very, right. um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm passionate in what I do and, and I'm also competitive. So, it, but yeah, so it's funny you say that if I could make up any haircut, I actually made one up called the x-ray part. So, yes. Okay. So maybe, you know, it'll be, we'll have x-ray part, the Rachel, the Sassoon, like it's, we're going to make it a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. So um, let's talk about the history of the fade. Um, so can you provide our listeners with a brief overview of the history, the origin? How did, how did it become a distinctive style? So I'm not sure where, like it actually, came, a lot of people were, I actually got informed with this from the whole thing, you know, from the whole thing. Okay. News article. A lot of people. So I don't know. I know that the military was, yep. they've been getting high in tights, but from what I know, the black community is the ones that actually like faded that in, like the okay. military just did a high and like the black community started fading that, you know, like, like what I have right here, yep. like a nice blend, no lines, sharp line up. Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's been made popular by, you know, athletes, rappers, um, and look at it today. Everyone, almost everyone gets a fade somehow, whether it's on the sides or the back or, or something, you know? So, um, I would definitely give give credit credit to African American culture, you know, because um they were, you know, that's what that's where that really, you know, the really nice blend sharp lineups came from for sure. I love it. Can you just like it must be hard for you to go out in public and see some with like an imperfect fade, right? Are you the guy that's like, mm, no, yeah, mm -mm. that's me, yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> Cause I try, you know, I'm at the airport every week. So I'm around, <laughs> yeah, I'm around thousands of people a week. So I see thousands of haircuts a week, you know? So I'm, I'm seeing some pretty You're bad like, ones at, mm -mm. The, at the area. Yeah. <laughs> some okay. crazy ones for sure. <laughs> Have you ever actually walked up to somebody and been like, so I need to, tell you something <laughs> nah, I need you to I, use, no we're not going there okay I'm too shy for that you seem so too I'm kind just, yeah <laughs> yeah but I'll definitely take a peek you know maybe send us <laughs> maybe send a snapchat to one of my friends or girlfriends yes. <laughs> my girlfriend's a barber too so no she, way she, yeah she's she's a barber in England so oh my um, gosh she owns a barbershop in England so it's pretty cool you know it's been a couple years and um, it's been cool with that too, you know, having, you know, your significant other do the same craft as you and she's really good yeah. at what she does. So it's been cool. Do you want to give her a shout out? Yeah. It's uh Katie fades on Instagram. Katie, you know? KD fades, Katie, K A T I E fades. Okay. Got yeah. it. She's okay. So she cuts my hair, does my hair probably the best out of anyone. So it's, it's really talented. Yep. I mean, I was looking at, and your fade looks, I mean, it should be impeccable, right? Um, 
Um, but I was wondering, can you do that yourself? But now we know that Katie does it. Yeah, we both, I do it myself and then <laughs> she does it when she's here. Visiting. Okay. Did you meet in the industry? Yeah. Just on, um, okay. just through Instagram. Yeah. Oh, just, dang. And, uh, You've had some Instagram moments in your yeah. career. <laughs> on Instagram, she messaged me, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Just um, saying. It's yeah. a nice story. We actually, um, we, you know, we, <laughs> we hit it off because obviously we're both barbers and yep. we ended up meeting like halfway in Barbados. Um, one oh my week, gosh. And we've been together ever since. So that's yeah. incredible. Yep. I love it. That's great. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about, you know, for those of us who aren't barbers and um, tell me a little bit about some of the things that go into the perfect fade. And I, yes. I am familiar with the different numbers, but Break maybe break one down for me. Okay, that's a great question because um, the thing that I think is the most important is how you you make your guidelines. Mm. Um, so I do a lot of classes. Um, you know, obviously I, I'm sponsored by Babyless Pro. I've mm -hmm. been with Babyless for seven years now. Um, Congrats! That's best great. company in the world is they're really amazing. They really treat us well. More than that, we have some of the best tools ever that, you know, cut really good. So that's very easy to use. So in these classes, I really kind of break down how to set guidelines because guidelines is going to be the key to each step. You know, every okay. every little like fade has a different step to it. So okay. obviously they're all different shades. If you can see this, these are all mm -hmm. different shades. Yep. And what shades are, shades are just longer hair falling onto the scalp, blocking the light coming through, you know, oh. so you can't see the scalp. Yep. See? yep. So here you can see my scalp here. Yep. You can, it's So that's basically all fades are different shades and what shades hmm. come from are different garbs, you know, different yep. lengths. So when, when I do um, classes, I like to break it down into, you know, guidelines. So I always start, if I'm doing a bald fade, I'll start here with a zero. Okay. And then my next guideline will be with a one. And then I'll okay. fade that down. So okay. I'll take that line out. And by fading down means I take the lever. I actually have a clipper right here. This is actually my clipper. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, babyless, babyless. We did a, a patty cuts edition clipper. So love it. So great. Made it a nice green. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, so basically by fading down, I mean, you start with the lever all the way open at its longest length okay. and then you gradually go down like this Got to it. the shortest length. So okay. I would start off here at my longest length and then close it and go down, close it and go down, close it and go down until, you know, I, I fade out all that right. line. Okay. Once I take that line out, I go to the higher step and make another okay. guideline. So I would do usually a number two. And then I would fade that down to where I did that number one line and then just so on and so on. So I wish I could, you know, obviously that's why I do classes so I can really break yeah. it down. Um, but setting your guidelines is probably one of my most important factors in getting a nice, really nice fade. Like and is that something guidelines. is that something that you sort of self-taught yourself or you learned some of the basics in barbering school, or is it a craft that you just have to kind of hone in? Um, I've learned, I've done both. Um, okay. I've learned from a lot of educators on, you know, Instagram. I've took that, I've took hundreds of in-person classes as well. Okay. You know, I've looked up to a lot of people in the industry and I spent a lot of money, like traveling around, going to these hair shows and sitting yeah. in these guys' classes that I looked up to. Um, so I would take stuff from some of them and, and, um, obviously stuff that I've learned from, you know, when I was younger, cause I, you know, I was pretty good at fading, Yeah. but I just kind of took these classes to get even better, see different perspectives yep. of how to do fades and different, different techniques. And then I would try it out and see if it worked for me, you know? Um, and then if it didn't work for me, then I just, if it did though, it, it's something I still use today. Yeah. So every, all those classes I went to is all worth it. You know, everything, you know, everything that I've learned because um, some of that stuff I still use today. So it's kind of a mixture of everything. Okay. Yeah. Who do you look up to in the industry? You mentioned that you've learned from some of them. Do you have anyone off the top of your head you want to share? And there's like hundreds, <laughs> I would say. Um, right. There was a lot a lot of Philly guys, you know, that I started looking up to, um, Kenny Duncan's one of them. Yeah. I always liked his work. 
Um, there's, you know, there's this guy, Chink the Barber. There was this Building Better Barbers crew that was really cool. Um, man, it's just, there was so many. Um, a lot of Florida guys, like yeah. my friend Bones, um, Mark Marrero. Mark Marrero. There's like, man, it's just hard, too hard to name. I could name like, yeah. I would have to go by region. I can name, you know. <laughs> 20 people from each region, you know, so I looked up to a lot of people and got inspiration from a lot of people still do for sure. I love that. Do you feel like that sort of like subculture of barbering you share with each other and it's a friendly sort of healthy competition amongst oh, all yeah, of you? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I feel like the guys that I'm friends with, we've both, we've always kind of just like push each other to just keep growing and getting better and, and, you know, just, yeah. just leveling up, you know, not even just, haircut wise, just like career wise, you know, that's great doing different things, you know, getting out there, trying different things, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I've made some amazing friends in the industry, barbers and stylists, you know, I've, now that I do a lot of shows, you know, with baby lists, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm at a lot of, you know, stylist shows, um, I'm meeting people that I look up to in that industry as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, it's the rising tide, right? It raises the whole industry. And I think that's something at the start of the interview you mentioned, I didn't know this could be a career. I didn't know this could be an option. And that's one of the things at the T's we're really passionate about is we want everyone from your guidance counselor to your grandfather to know that this is a viable, incredible industry to be in. Mm. Um, and you stated that so well at the beginning. So thank you for that. Okay. So we want to move on to a little bit of like barbering sports fashion, kind of the intersection. We know that hair is an expression of identity and certainly within sports. Um, my question for you is how do you see hairstylists contributing and barbers contributing to the overall fashion and style culture in today's world? I think it's on, I think I always, I look at someone's hair before I look at their outfit, to be honest. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> I, I always, I think your hair sets the mark for just, yeah. you know, how you look and how you present yourself. Like, even if you have the nicest outfit on, if you just, have, if you're not looking right up top here, it kind of throws it off, you know, but vice versa, you can have a, a nice haircut and a stunning haircut hairstyle and just have a mediocre outfit on and you, you look, you still look super sharp. So I think, yeah. you know, the, I think the hair plays a huge part in, in someone's overall look. I mean, we've seen it. We've, I mean, I've seen it with my own client, just Travis, like you can go Google pictures of him, you know, if you Google picture of him about six or seven years ago and, and see the haircut style that we've changed into yeah. it's he's he looks like a whole different person so interesting yeah it's it's if you if if you're bored go google like travis kelsey <laughs> transformation and well, you'll see the, you'll see what a haircut can do for someone you know it's it's pretty cool for sure yeah i agree so my mom was a stylist and salon owner for 40 years and so there wasn't a day or an hour in my life that didn't go by where she was like fluff your hair up get your hair fixed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it. Once you're kind of in that mode, um, it does really make, it makes a big difference in, in your facial structure, the whole thing, right? Yeah, it does. Even just going from, I'm, I remember uh, when I started cutting Mark Ingram, he had just like a half on the side. He didn't take it all the way to the skin. And I okay. remember just changing that up and bringing yeah. the fade just a tiny bit higher. And it changed his whole, like, yeah, his whole, like, face structure, you know, it's even like, especially with men and beards, um, yeah. you really need to know how to cut a beard to, you know, make their face look like the best it can. You leave it too long on the sides, it makes their face look too bloated. But if you yeah. cut it too short, they look, you know, their jaw looks too long. So you you really have to like study how, how beards work and, and, and what will look good on someone's face. How was that um, and figuring that out specifically with Travis? Obviously, he's got the beard. Um, is that something, you know, that you take a look at the cut, the type of fade, this is what's going to work, or you look at the facial structure? Like, walk me through that process. Yeah, so um, so he his hair, like, the crazy thing is his hair is actually very hard to cut. He has, um, he has like, a couple of ridges up in this area. So you have to be really careful. You have to leave it a little darker. You I know, see. I've seen sometimes when I can't cut them or, you know, years back when I wasn't cutting them, I've seen people take it up too high and it makes mm -hmm. his head look way too round and skinny. Sure, sure. Um, so be, um, before I do the beard, 
like up top, I really want to make sure that I leave it. I leave, you know, it dark right around this area okay. because he has some ridges and stuff like that. Um, and hmm. then also back in this area here, you really need to kind of cut to where that occipital bone is. You want to cut down around it. You don't want to take it uh, up too high. Yeah. So you always want to follow like the occipital. You want to look at that occipital bone and kind of think, okay, how much hair am I going to leave back here to kind of make it like a square shape? Because you don't want to take it up too high. If you take it up too high, it's going to make someone's hair, lo hair look super round. And as men, as barbers, we want... We want a square shape. We don't want a feminine, yeah. you know, females go for the round. The men hmm. is, men go for yeah. you know, square. So that's one thing you always want to look is how can I make a haircut, you know, square on a mouth. Okay. And then down to the beard, does that always want to be square too, or? For the most part. Yeah. yeah. For the most okay. part, you know, the beard doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be too square, but you just like Travis, I had to. To be honest, I didn't go and do his beard perfect right away. It was a lot of tri like trial and error, you know, and now I know exactly where to fade. I know exactly where it starts getting long, like where it's going to make his facial shape look the best. So okay. he kind of has like a like a facial shape like mine. So right around here is where I start like leaving it long like this. And it just kind of makes his, you yeah. know. Obviously, his beard is long now, and I've been getting all the Swifties are telling me to cut it. So we'll be cutting it soon. <laughs> oh, get, my gosh. You know, the Swifties are on your IG. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you if you um, <laughs> if you Google Patty Cuts, someone just told me this, actually. If you Google right now, if you Google Patty Cuts on Twitter, it'll mm -hmm. it'll only be comments about the Swifties telling me to cut Travis's beard. <laughs> Come on. That's amazing. So if you guys are watching this, we will be cutting it soon. Travis Ooh. is just, uh, yeah, he's just on a little vacation now. I actually think he's going to see Taylor in Australia. So all right, uh, we will Only be cutting it. So yeah, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. But his, um, hit back to the, his facial, sh you know, structure, his, it's really important to, to get not just Travis's hair, uh, beard, right. Anyone's beard. Yeah. Because beard is is what you're you're gonna look at someone's. Basically, how I want to put that is the overall most important thing of a male haircut is the shape. Because okay. you're not just kind of staring at someone's actual fade the whole time. You're mm -hmm. just staring at their overall profile. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you're not seeing like only barbers are looking at actual fade. You know how like yeah. if there's any lines, <laughs> the regular person's looking you in the eyes like this. And yeah. all they can see is a profile, you mm -hmm. know? So that's like the most important thing is to get that profile right. And, and, you know, you will, for the most part, you want it as square as possible, as masculine looking as possible. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. That was a great breakdown. So we know that, you know, men's style hairstyles have changed. What, what are you seeing from a trend perspective? Like, where are we going in 24, 25? What's happening? What like, trends I mean, are you setting? Are we going to bring back the x-ray? Are we going to make it a thing for 24? Have to. I might, we, you know what? <laughs> we might have to do that. I might have to do, um, you know, maybe raffle something off for x-ray part competition yes. and the winner gets Love something. It. Yeah, we might have to bring it back. It's been, it's been years. Because I remember at one time when it first came out, people in, you know, people in England were doing it. It, was, yeah. it went like pretty viral, which was pretty cool That's to awesome. see. awesome. As far as haircuts, I think short hair honestly might be coming back in the style, which yeah. it kind of left for a little while. Um, and barbers got real sad about it because, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, right. Like <laughs> shorter hair is easier to do. You know, we, we don't want to do mullets and stuff all the time, no. you know, even though mullets are pretty easy. Um, but I think shorter hair might be coming back in the style, which is is pretty cool, you know. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know because, you know, what's crazy. I don't work in the shop anymore. You know, I do a yeah. lot of traveling. So I it's hard for me to like kind of see what people are getting and asking for. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair. The only yeah. time I can see is on Instagram and stuff like that. So um, it's hard for me to speak on that. But um, but yeah, so we want I short hair to be hair. around. Yeah, we want it, want it here for all of our barbers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, if, you know, someone is out there listening and they're like, Hey, I'm inspired. What, what do I do to take my next step? What could, what advice do you have for young barbers or someone out there who hasn't made that leap yet? Um, just 
like what I did is I just, I, I invested in myself. I remember like spending every last, I remember spending like borrowing money from someone to, to buy my camera stuff. Yeah. You know, like there was a point where I didn't like, I was dead broke and I was like borrowing money to, to get this lens that I needed to make my Instagram look better, you know, and all that paid off. Like, yeah. So I would just, if, if, I think like, I really believe like social media is so important now that you're, you're like Instagram profile and whatever. I don't really use TikTok or anything like that, but that stuff's so important to have yeah. looking right, you know, because yeah. it's everything now, you yeah. know, people don't like, people just go right to your Instagram to look and see if you're good or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I really believe it's like, it's really important to, to invest in like whatever, media content that you yeah. what route you want to go with it you know for me it was right. pictures like I still like you know pictures was my thing um if you want to do like youtuber stuff like invest everything you can now and then it'll all pay off faster than if you just beat around the bush and and yeah. just kind of wait to do something so um my advice would just be, I mean, I ain't telling you to spend all your money, like, but that's what I did. And <laughs> yeah, it, and it worked. It, worked. Yeah, so. <laughs> it seemed to seem to land you at the Super Bowl. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, just don't, you know, it's kind of cliche, but just don't wait around. To, yeah. If you want to do something and you're passionate about doing it, then just go and do whatever it takes to do it. So that's, I love it. that's Great. Those are great parting words as we, as we round into what we call the tease quick takes. So if you're up for a couple quick takes, I'm going to hit you with them. Yep. All right. Let's go. All right. The first one is what was the most unique style or fashion trend you've ever embraced? Um, what do you mean by embrace? Like that you have oh, like myself? participated in. Yeah. Like what trend that you look back and you're like, Oof, I did that trend. It was a mistake or I loved it. Ooh. Um, <laughs> there was a time where I was doing a lot of like high top haircuts Ooh, and I, okay. I really <laughs> loved, I enjoyed doing it so much like retro style. Um, yeah. you know, you don't see it that much anymore. Everyone's doing the curl sponge and curling it now, mm -hmm. but there was a time where like people were wearing yes. it really nice and perfect. And I really enjoyed doing that. Like it's the process of doing it was, is super fun. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, that's something I loved. And, you know, I wish it would come back more. I like that. Okay. What was the worst haircut that you have ever had yourself? Mm, that, ooh, I've had, <laughs> man, I, cause you remember I started on myself right. so all through <laughs> high school. I had the, I would have had the worst haircut in all high school, you know, in the whole school. I have, I always was walking around with pushback lines and my, the back isn't faded in, you know, because I can only see the sides. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I would say all of high school I had oh, the worst haircut. Yeah. You were like a walking advertisement, but not yeah. in the right way. <laughs> yes, exactly. Too <laughs> like, busy to get didn't your own. Want to come. People were like, no, I'm not getting my hair cut by him if he does that to himself. So it might have been a bad thing to do, you know. That's... Yeah, right. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. This is personal. What is your phone screen time from this past week? Seven hours, 39 minutes. Okay, not bad. Right? We've had some that are pretty darn high. And then yeah. you're like, wait, it's not like, too bad. You... No, well, my too girlfriend's bad. also in town, so we've been doing stuff. And, okay. You know, All right. But we actually been going to the <laughs> pool a lot, so you basically sit on your phone there the whole time. But <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah. Okay, who are your must follows on Instagram? Hmm. Um. ESPN for sure. Okay. You know, I'm yeah. a big sports, sports guy, so I need mm -hmm. I need my you know I need my media sports you know news and media. Um. Let's see, barber wise, who am I? Um, I'm really enjoying this guy named It's Marvy Marv. His content okay. lately, he's making like funny barber stuff, and it's it's just like uh, kind of fun to watch. Okay. You know, he's he does stuff like um, not so much haircut related, like actual step by step related, but he's doing like scenarios that happen every day with barbers. Okay, um, that's and great. And he kind of talks like about the latest trends and, and events. So um, he's a really good follower right now. Um, what else do I enjoy? I I enjoy uh what are some random stuff I enjoy? <laughs> 
man, I have to look. I have to look and see what pops up. Um, there's because there's definitely some like uh yeah, most of my stuff is all sports to be honest. Like UFC, um, a lot of UFC, yeah. All a right, of, UFC. A lot of UFC okay. and NFL. I okay. try and stay up with the trend. I I actually yeah. really try and stay up with the latest news just when I'm around all my guys. I For know sure. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. One of my good friends that I started cutting his hair and we became good friends. His name's Kamara Usman. Um, at one point he was number one in the whole world. So Whoa. yeah, it was wow. pretty um it's 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 been cool seeing the opportunities I've gotten with him. Yeah. Um, because like I said, I during the quarantine, I just asked him, Hey, can I do some videos for you and pictures? Yeah. Oh wow. Because I was cutting his hair at this point. Um, it's kind of a crazy story how I started cutting his hair. I actually basically paid to cut his hair because I was in LA at the time and he you know, we followed each other on Instagram and he messaged me right before one of his fights, like, Hey, I'm leaving oh my gosh. tomorrow. Can you cut my hair? And I'm like, I'm in LA. And I remember I was like, let me see what I can do. And I paid like 600 bucks to take the red eye home. And I think I charged yeah. 200. So I lost yeah. like 400 bucks to, <laughs> to cut his hair before one of his fights. And ever yeah. since that first haircut, I've been cutting his hair ever since. Wow. Um, and now I also do his photos and videos for, okay. for, so I travel with them to fights and, and the whole week I'm just filming them, um, because I asked them if I could do it during the quarantine, you know, so yeah. and he gave me a shot. So, um, that's, that, awesome. that's been pretty cool too, doing that stuff with him. So, yeah. Just, I mean, you know, that's another, another example of investing in yourself, right? You're like, this is a huge opportunity. I can't, can't let this one pass me by. Yeah. Awesome. So that's been cool. I've grown into, I mean, I've already was big UFC and NFL fans, but I've really grown into, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're so close to it. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Imagine that you could teleport anywhere in the world. Where would you go right now? Mm. Right now at the very, I really want to, I really want to go to Hawaii. That's one more, that's okay. one place I haven't been yet. And I really want to go. Um, and I just like, I just like seeing like scenery. Like I said, I like taking pictures and stuff like that. So, um, I really want to go to Hawaii and I've actually know some people out there, some barbers that I'm in touch with all oh, the time. Cool. They seem like the coolest people in the world. So I think Hawaii right now is at the top of my list of, of right. where I would want to go. Yep. All right. I love it. Well, this has been so much fun. Can you remind everybody where they can find you on Instagram and your dot com? Yep. Um, Patty underscore cuts on Instagram. Um, that's pretty much where I do all, you know, all okay. my stuff that, um, I'm, I think I'm going to start a YouTube channel soon, like doing actual, you know, breakdowns of haircuts and stuff like that. I think that's one of the routes I want to go. Um, but for now you can get all that information from Patty underscore cuts on Instagram. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. This has been a true pleasure getting to know you and for, for all of your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Whether you are fresh out of cosmetology school or looking for a change of pace in your current position, find a salon that you can call home. A place where you will feel as good walking into work as you do walking out of the salon. With competitive pay plans, flexible schedules, ongoing education, medical benefits, and a support system you can't find anywhere else, JCPenney Salon is the perfect opportunity for you. JCPenney Salon is looking for a stylist who is willing to take charge of their career, someone who is excited and ready for their future in the beauty industry. Apply to JCPenney Salon today at jobs.jcp.com or at the link in the show notes. JCPenney Salon is not your first or last job. It's your career. Hey, stylists, are you looking for a new hair extension or wig supplier and ready to take your client's hair game to the next level? Introducing KM Extend Hair Extensions. KM Extend supplies all types of high quality professional hair extensions, including Genius and Machine Wefts, Fusion, Clip-In, Halos, and Tape-In hair extensions. They also supply custom wigs. Whether it's volume, length, or a burst of color, Cam Extend has the solution to make your artistic vision a reality. Serving salons, top stylists, and a thriving consumer community, they have a passion that goes beyond hair, helping women express individuality and creativity. Trendy, innovative, and affordable, KM Extend is reinventing a wholly modern approach to the high-quality hair market. 
Visit www.kmxten.com. That's K-M-X-T-E-N-D.com or the link in the show notes for more. Revive your hair with MK Professional Treatments. These innovative hair treatments are designed to provide intense hydration, nourishment, and shine to your hair in just minutes. With its unique formula, it helps to reduce frizz and improve the overall texture of your hair, all made without harsh chemicals or formaldehyde. MK Professional is available worldwide and contains ingredients that deeply penetrate the hair shaft, providing much needed moisture and hydration, helping to repair even the most damaged strands while restoring their natural strength. Results last up to six months. Visit MK Professional or the link in the show notes for more.